Hello and welcome to another episode of Issues and Answers, a production of the Government Information Service. Uh, we are on NTN right now. We'd like to thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Jessie Leonce. In today's installment, we are focusing on national health insurance, something that is surely on the way for St. Lucia. But of course, so many things have, been, have to be put in place first. Uh, I would like to welcome my guests, the health planner in the corporate planning unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, Lauren James, as well as chief economist in the Department of Finance, Janai Leons, to speak to us about the progress that has been made so far and what is left to be done. A good day. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you for having, having us. We are definitely pleased to be here and to explain and, and sort of let the public know where we are with respect to national health insurance. Wonderful. I want to start with you, Ms. James. If you could just, for the, the purposes, for the benefit of our viewers, give a definition of uh, national health insurance and what it would mean for our population. Okay, I just before I answer that question, I want to give a scenario. We have many cars on the road and <coughs> we are required to insure our cars and, and if we don't have insurance we cannot be driving on the road this and f similarly for our houses so why should our health be any different um, national health insurance is really a prepaid mechanism through which persons can access health care without paying out of pocket for health care when they need to use it it's a system by which we we are trying to encourage persons to take a more proactive approach to their health and to prevent them from going to health crisis, which is eventually more, cost, more costly for them. So it works almost like car insurance, um, house insurance. It's just for health insurance now, protecting you against any um, costly intervention that you may need in the future. Okay. From the administrative perspective, tell us uh, the work that has been ongoing. But first of all, funding for this project. We know it's under the Health System Strengthening Project. Uh, tell us a bit about what has been allocated for this venture. Well, currently we have um, under the Ministry of Health a $25 million World Bank project uh, where we have approximately $5 million in place to put in place the structures for health insurance. That doesn't mean, like I said in an earlier interview, that doesn't mean the $5 million is to, $5 million US, million USD, that is, is not to pay health insurance but to put in the necessary structures to operationalize health insurance. That would mean things like legislation, you have your registration of the population, and um, your health management information system, and all the necessary structures in place. Okay. Uh, speak to us about the initial phase of NHI in St. Lucia. What, what will it look like and what will it, it address in terms of coverage? Right now, um, we are in discussion with um, private health insurance because they've submitted proposals, but what we envisage is that it will um, encompass a, a range of services such as inpatient care, outpatient care. We would have um, surgical benefits. Um, air, um, we, we are envisage to have air ambulance, but it's an ongoing discussion with the health insurance um, providers. It is not set in stone, but it is our vision for the health insurance to have those sort of coverage for the population. Okay. Uh, I want to now come to you, Mr. Leons. If you could just okay. speak to us about, um, well, we're, we're venturing into welfare economics here. Yeah. Speak to us about the, how it will augur well, I should say, for the population, for the country's economics at this time, for an injection of NHI. Thank you. Thank you for having me on the, on the program. One of the things that we noticed was that Sanusha actually has relatively high levels of out-of-pocket expenditures. So on average, we are spending almost four times the amount that is the World Health Organization and other institutions have indicated is the amount that a citizen should be paying out-of-pocket. Each dollar that you spend out-of-pocket, that is money that could have been spent on other economic activity, education, and what have you. And healthcare 
and paying for your health care has the, the potential to bankrupt many persons to the extent that they are not covered or they don't have health insurance coverage. When we dug a bit deeper, we recognized that only 18% of, of the working age population has health insurance coverage. And that made us look a bit deeper to see why is that the case. And one of the, the issues that's contributing to that is the price of, of, of insurance policies, the design of insurance policies, and also our attitudes and, and perceptions with respect to, to insurance. So one of the things the National Health Insurance Scheme is, is trying to do is to meet with the insurance providers and see to what extent we can design standardized products that can be at a price point that persons would, would be able to afford, but also designed in a way that it may change the attitude and the perception uh, with respect to insurance a bit. And to the extent that you could do that, a lot of the debilitating costs that persons need to incur should uh, a health event happen to them, that would be, be spared given the fact that they have uh, health insurance coverage. And those monies can be spent on, on education, childcare, and a whole host of, of, of other areas. So to Ms. James' point, the pooling that, uh, that insurance allows and facilitates has economic benefits as well. Okay, Ms. James, back to you. It would certainly also reduce inequity in our population as well. That's correct. Because you have persons over ver various um, classes yeah. uh, not being able to afford yeah. insurance right now. Speak to us about the significance of that aspect. Um, I always like to use the real life examples um, when, we sp when we speak to those issues. We've seen many persons now, uh, young persons getting cancer, and we see it, we have donation sheets, we have um, dances, we have barbecues. That is what the health insurance is looking to get people away from. That persons that no matter your race, your sex, um, your economic status that you are able to access this basket of service, and there's no barrier to accessing that health, that basket of services. So that is how it really intends to reduce the inequity in health. Okay. Now, I want to talk about, you wanted to add a point, Mr. Uh, Leon. Just, just, just to add to that, to that point, one of the, 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 the notions that the state is, is looking to do is where persons are poor and vulnerable and whatnot to ensure that those persons can be provided with uh, um, insurance policies mm -hmm. that would allow them to access an array of services and benefits that they otherwise would not have. So I think care is, care is, um, is, is being placed in the design of this, mm -hmm. that whatever is to be designed, the poor, the vulnerable, and what have you, will be proxy means tested to ensure mm -hmm. that they meet the, the requisite standards for poverty and vulnerability. So we're not just using ad lib terms, but proxy means tested, and to the extent that persons do meet the, the, the definition, I think the design phase that we are in now envisages that those persons would be able to receive the coverage. Wonderful. We're speaking on the national health insurance and the work that is going into it right now to achieve that for St. Lucia. We're talking to health planner in the corporate planning unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, Ms. Lauren James, as well as chief economist in the Department of Finance, Mr. Jonai Leons. When we come back, we will get into coverage. Stay with us. Pamela, I noticed that you built your retaining wall on my property. You will have to give me my land back or compensate me for that. My contractor isn't dumb. I trust that he will not build anything on your property. Where is your proof? Let's go to court. This situation does not require you to go to court. Looks like we have to go through mediation here. Mediation is a way people resolve conflicts like this. Someone, a third party, comes to speak to both parties. This person is called the mediator. The mediator is impartial. He or she makes sure that communication between both parties is effective and efficient. So, the mediator is a judge? No, the mediator is not a judge. Mediators, unlike judges, do not decide cases or impose settlements. Let me get a mediator to handle this retaining wall and that kitchen. Kitchen? Yes, your kitchen also falls on my land. Let me call the mediator. Thank you so much for staying with us. Uh, this is Issues and Answers, and we're talking national health insurance with Ms. Lauren James out of the Ministry of Health and Wellness. She is the corporate, she is the health planner in the corporate planning unit, and we have Chief <laughs> Economist over uh, from the Department of Finance, Mr. Jonai Leons. Uh, uh, 
Ms. James, I want to get into NHI coverage. At this time, the purpose really is to provide all St. Lucians ultimately with affordable uh, rates of health insurance here on island. Talk to us about the coverage. The coverage is for all eligible residents of St. Lucia. Um, that would mean um, even if you're from St. Kitts and Nevis and you're authorized to work and live in St. Lucia and you are contributing, you will be eligible for coverage. Um, it is our hope that all individuals, um, regardless of age, is covered, but that will be an ongoing discussion with um, the insurance companies. But it is our vision that um, all eligible residents, and that would mean persons who are allowed to live and work in St. Lucia. Okay, and as we mentioned earlier, there are certain vulnerable groups that will be yes. um, assessed to determine their uh, ability to pay for that insurance. That's correct. Um, alongside individuals who will be purchasing uh, on their behalf, their, they ha the state will also be purchasing in bulk. So tell us about that. Yeah. So, so one of one of the things that we have been working with the World Bank and our other stakeholders as we are in the design design element is to address which modality is best. So would it be best for the state to purchase all of the policies and then have persons who are poor and vulnerable receive from the state and also persons who are not poor and vulnerable but would like to, to purchase insurance to do that for the state as well, or whether it may be best to have the state simply focus on the poor and vulnerable and allow your non-poor to be able to access through their employer, through a provider of their choice and so forth. So we are doing the analysis to see what permutation works, uh, works best for us. What are us. some of the factors that are being considered? In that? Well, with respect to coverage, one of the, the, the key aims for the, the state is to improve access. So most persons or most insurance products right now once you get to 60 or 65, these products end. So to the extent that you're over 60 or 65, you often don't have uh, health insurance coverage. So we're actually working with insurance providers to see if we could design products for those persons who are after 60, 65, so that they too will be able to have coverage, albeit at a smaller scale relative to what's, what's the, the norm for your working age. But we want all demographics to, to be covered by health insurance. What's happening now, where you look at your working age population, it's only a small percentage with insurance there. And when you look at your non-working age, so 65 and above, they cannot have insurance, even if they wanted to, or they have the financial means to. So the discussion with insurance providers is to explore how the entire demographic, age-wise, can be covered. And that, uh, to Ms. James' point, both persons who are citizens, and also persons who are domiciled here, uh, resident here, or simply working here, they will be able to purchase, purchase products as well. Um, so coverage is really intended to have all age demographics uh, covered and that to have the policies so designed to allow any demographic to, to access. Okay, and, and in keeping with that, we also have um, seeing the note, self-employed and the informal sector workers will be required to join the NHI. Uh, speak mm -hmm. to us about the significance of that aspect, tying into your, your statement. Earlier. Yeah, thank you. I think COVID is actually, COVID-19 and the pandemic has actually showed the importance of pooling. We saw when COVID hit that many persons who were not contributors to the NIC now needed to, to, to get benefits because there was no safety net under them given that they were self-employed. Self so many persons had to fall back on the state for income support or what have you. Whereas persons who were NIC contributors, they were able to benefit from the NIC scheme. And I think in the discussions we have had with stakeholders to date, there's a heightened sense amongst your self-employed and, and whatnot who typically would not have thought it best to, to, to purchase any sort of group product or what have you. That attitude, that mindset mm -hmm. is changing a bit. So I think those self-employed and whatnot who typically would opt out mm -hmm. of pension contributions or what we are now proposing, health, health schemes, there is a new attitude, a new, a new sense, and they will be able to, to purchase and we are encouraging them to purchase insurance. Our intent is to really have broad-based insurance coverage for the, the entire populace, all age demographics, and to the extent that you have that coverage, many more persons will be able to access care. And 
all sectors of the society would benefit in that given you can now access care, you will have less persons trying to access care later on in their chronic uh, disease or what have you. What you have now is that persons are choosing to not go to the doctor early up in their, in their condition and where things become really severe, really acute, they present themselves to the Owen King or to the St. Jude facility and whatnot, <laughs> where it is now way more expensive to mm -hmm. treat and it's way more debilitated from, from their standpoint. So to the extent that you could encourage persons to have insurance coverage upfront and be able to, to see the doctor and have visits, two free visits a year and so forth, we're hoping it will stimmy some of that lateness that we are seeing. Okay, and, and of course, we are a population, we are well known for yeah. our pre-existing conditions, yes. our no, yes. uh, chronic non-communicables. Um, I want to get into eligibility on that note, but before yeah. I, I come to that, I want to talk about um, the, the, the life of the coverage. Mm. Is there a time, is there, is there a shelf life for NHI? Will there be? Well, most insurance products on the market right now have lifetime caps. So you can get a $500,000 policy, a $200,000 policy, and that covers your entire lifeline, lifetime. Sorry. Mm -hmm. what, one of the things we are working with insurance providers to do is to sort of step away from that a bit and to essentially have, whether it be a two or three year uh, annual caps, which can be adjusted. So your annual cap or your major medical limit, let's say, is 100000 or 200000 and to sort of move away from the, 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 lifetime, the lifetime caps. It is a, a negotiating with the insurance providers, but that's one of the, the issues that we are, we are thinking to do as well. And on, on the issue of eligibility, you did indicate that there are many pre-existing conditions. When you look at the, the market right now, what you see is that many persons cannot get insurance because mm -hmm. of a pre-existing condition. Yeah. So it's actually one of, one of the discussion points that we are having to explore how can we move away from that so that anyone, regardless of they having a pre-existing condition or not, can purchase a product that is affordable. Because <coughs> then otherwise it will simply be denied. And to the extent that you have large swaths of the population denied, um, not due to financial ability, but simply the, the market does not cater to them, that means that those persons now, in terms of their economic situation and whatnot, they have no recourse to any sort of reimbursement and they bear the full cost of their condition. So to the extent that you could shift and design insurance products to remove the, the, the barrier of, mm -hmm. of patient conditions, that, that I think would redound to the society well. Okay, understood. But just to add to what I said, and if we have to exclude persons with pre-existing condition, then we exclude a huge segment of our population mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we, uh, we're not able to get to, in, to get to where, where we want to be, where we have persons managing the condition from going to further crisis. Yeah. So um, if we have to look at excluding those persons, that would exclude a large proportion of our population because we have huge, huge amounts of persons with hypertension, diabetes, and now we have cancer on the rise. So it would... That's so it a, that's would not be discriminatory in that sense? Yeah, that is the intention. No, that, that's the intent, yes. That's okay. the intent. Um, in terms of... Um, the overseas care that's something that we see come up you mentioned miss james persons raising funds for mm -hmm. travel abroad mm -hmm. where healthcare mm -hmm. access is better but it, mm -hmm. it also comes at a cost mm -hmm. um speak to us about w how the coverage nhi will deal with that yeah, there we have proposed a component in the package for that but that would have to be something i guess we'd have to work it out with the insurance providers where it has to be something that is not provided on island if it's provided on island, then it has to be accessed here. But if it's something that's absolutely necessary, it will have to be accessed overseas. But it's something that we have factored mm -hmm. into the package, mm -hmm. and it's under discussion with the companies, the insurance companies. And okay. just, just, just to that point, the, the Health Strengthening Project Program is looking at ways within which some of the very same issues where it's not offered here and whatnot, what can mm -hmm. be done to strengthen right. the health system here? to sort of reduce the, 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 the need, and in some cases it is the need, to go, to go overseas. So to the extent that you could invest in the, the capital stock and the human resource that solution needs to be able to mm -hmm. offer some of those services, not all, but at least some of those services, mm -hmm. it would put us in a, in a situation where you would not need that mm -hmm. many persons flying to Martinique, flying to Colombia, and, and, and whatnot. Okay. Going back to, to the, the qualifications for accessing NHI in, in St. Lucia, you just have to be a resident. You don't have to be a St. Lucia national. Yeah? The, yeah. 
that yeah. would be correct so that, yeah. that's what would obtain yeah. would the individual if the person is coming for less than a year what are the obligations uh, in terms of paying or contributing toward the NHI yeah I think that's that's one of one of the issues we've, we've been grappling with in terms of the, the length of period yeah, where it, it becomes uh, that you were you were sort of required or, or encouraged to, to do that um, I think a year uh, is, is good now we are we are looking towards a situation where persons can opt in if, if, if they choose to and particularly if they are here more than the for tax purposes 183 days is usually considered where you are where you are sort of tax resident so I think we are looking at, at that time period as sort of a, a, a threshold and then once you're over that period then it's definitely um, available to you so that's that's one of the modalities that we are looking at okay what about st lucians in the diaspora who are considering getting insurance through st lucia's nhi can they we we would have to we would have to discuss it i, I we are not settled on on that point as as yet but it, it is something that would be looked yeah. at with all stakeholders okay and what about persons who would have recently moved into St. Lucia, how soon would they be able to capitalize or be part of NHI? I think that goes back to the same yeah, um, question. Because, to the, to the for example, um, so I once yeah. lived and worked in um, St. Kitts and I contrib contributed to the, the um, NIC. NIC. Mm -hmm. And it was only after six months I could have claimed claims, yeah. Yeah. to the NIC. So it would have to be something to that effect. With those yeah. conditions. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so we are due for another break. Do stay with us. This is Issues and Answers. We're going to be going into our final segment after this break, continuing on with the stakeholders of NHI. Stay with us. Oi, you realize you step on my toe? Well, do something about it. Gasai, busting damn Hold on! If somebody try to cross you, Hold on. and the matting start to take you, Hold on. no need for your own violence, cause the police there to help you. Hold on. If a trouble start in this session, alright, no need for aggression. Hold on. We don't want no violence in the place. Hold on. Hold on. Control your temper, all right. respect each other. Don't let no trouble escalate, cause you know better. Control your temper, respect each other. Don't, do don't let no trouble escalate, cause you know better. Control your temper. A message from Mission Boys, Studio 758, Acid Creations, and the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. Good gone. Thank you so much for staying My with word. us. This is Issues Police. and Answers. We're talking national health insurance. And we are speaking to Mr. Janai Leons, Chief Economist in the Department of Finance, as well as the Health Planner in the Corporate Planning Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, Ms. Lauren James. Thank you so much, guys, for being here yeah. so far. It has been insightful. Uh, I want to get into stakeholders at this time. Um, what impact will NHI have on the healthcare sector? And we're talking from the administration, the ministry, all the way down to healthcare workers, nurses on the beat, and so on. That's a good question. Yeah. Um, <laughs> as you know, government spends approximately a hundred and let's say hundred and thirty, hundred and forty million dollars a year to the health sector, and right now we only recoup about five million. The other five million that we receive is from NIC as a contribution to health. It it um, would benefit the healthcare system in terms that we would be able to recoup monies to plow back into our health system to provide more services for the people. Um, we would also have, um, in terms of our population, they'll be able to access healthcare on a timely basis so that they would avoid going to those health crises um, or avoid it altogether or delay it. Mm -hmm. In terms of our health system, we are, it, I think that it would impact the health system in terms of quality that we would hold our health providers accountable for the outcomes. Mm -hmm. um, it would um, probably encourage more persons to go to those health providers because we plan on roping in the private sector. So they'll probably see a larger population, in, uh, a larger influx of persons in their, their practices. Um, we expect that persons would come out now because they have access now. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so less of a burden on the healthcare system yes. in terms of finances. Because we, and we intend to, by roping in the, pro, the, the private, we intend to like spread out the the patients so that it will be um, less of a burden on the public health system. Okay, and by which time performance-based financing would have been in full swing. Yes. The other services through the, the um, project would be in 
uh, as well. And as um, I look at you short, but mm -hmm. as you know, the World Bank project also aims to strengthen primary care. So we, yes. the gaps we identify in the primary health care in terms of equipment, infrastructure, we will be um, upgrading those to deal with the influx that we anticipate. Okay. So now, what of, what of the governing body for NHI? The Go governing mm -hmm. body. Um, that is still being worked out, but we um, are looking at something more like a central health regulatory authority, which would regulate um, the whole insurance company in terms of the benefits package, the, the providers um, of health services, the insurance providers, the patient registration and all that um, kind of thing to do with NHI. So we foresee something like that, but it's still under consideration. That would be more or less like the governance structure that would... Um, oversee NHI. Okay. And what sort of training is, has there been any training or will there be any training for healthcare workers to prepare them for the introduction of NHI? Yes, we do have a component under our health system strengthening project for training of, um, for capacity building for our healthcare workers. So we will be tapping into that to whatever training that they may need that we will be doing that. Okay. And what sort of engagement in terms of consultation that's also in the plans as well? Yes. Okay. Wonderful. Um, we know the private sector, the, well, the private insurance companies are, are definitely looking forward to seeing how this is fleshed out. Yes. But w what sort of, um, how will the, the implementation of NHI affect the private insurance companies? I think in the discussion of the insurance uh, providers, what we have indicated to them is that their market is going to is going to increase significantly. Right okay. now, each of the private sector uh, insurance companies are really servicing a relatively small small market, mm -hmm. a few hundred to a few thousand um, clients. To the extent that you could broaden that out and service mm -hmm. maybe double or even triple that, it does allow them to receive some economies of scale. To okay. the extent that you, as an insurance provider, are now working with a larger pool of of, of persons those premiums that you're getting from a, la a much larger pool also can read down to you to strengthen your, your, your product offerings and to also lower your costs over, over the, long, the long term, ideally, that is, mm -hmm. that is the hope. Mm -hmm. But essentially, it allows them to be, to be larger, stronger, by servicing a larger pool of, of persons. Because what's happening right now, due to the price points, the attitudes, and the current regulatory um, setup, very few people are coming. So they're only essentially reaching the choir to the extent that you could restructure the market where the entire audience has insurance coverage and is serviced by your different insurance providers it, it, it makes everyone better off not only the, the state but your insurance companies are now stronger and larger with a, a significantly enhanced pool of persons paying premiums and what have you okay but to add um to what Janai said it's not an intent to crowd out yeah. the current insurance market mm -hmm. it's more or less to uh, to Augment. Augment it, yeah. um, because if persons already have insurance, like myself, we just encourage persons to just, if it covers the bare, the bare, the bare minimum that we outline, we encourage persons to just stick with their policy and they don't have necessarily have to purchase a new insurance policy. Mm -hmm. So it's not intention to crowd out um, what currently exists. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Leos, I, I know we spoke a little bit about how the uh, NHI will benefit the population, mm -hmm. our economy, and so on. Mm -hmm. But how does the government intend to make this project sustainable? Because an, an investment of this magnitude, mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I can't think of a better word than recoup. Yes. How are you able to recoup? Yes. I think Ms. James spoke to it earlier. What, what you see now, both your St. Jude, Owen King, and some of your other facilities, while they provide services to the public, Due to the fact that the vast majority of the public does not have insurance and mm -hmm. the price points are, are, are so low, even when persons pay for the services that they receive from Owen King and whatnot, what they are paying for is relatively, relatively small given that it's a highly subsidized uh, mm -hmm. venture. To the extent that you have the entire populace or a significant percentage having insurance coverage you can then now have some of that cost being borne by your insurance providers and that redounds to the, to the benefit of the state by now being able to, to build a, a provider more so than an individual. So the, the, the pooling of premiums across the entire populace allows there to be an injection of monies into the system that the providers of healthcare, whether it be in the private sector or the public sector, 
can levy claims against that pool mm -hmm. that's housed by your insurance providers and therefore recoup way more than what, what is happening now. That increase uh, monies that you are now able to recoup, mm -hmm. you can now plow that back into yeah. some level of, of sustainability. And it becomes a, a positive cycle, we, we, we believe. Okay, and so final question before we wrap up. Yeah. Uh, what do you do if you already have um, private health insurance? And for the individuals who may be saying, how much is the premium? I'm ready to pay. Let's get this thing signed off on. Okay, the premium is still being uh, worked out with the insurance companies. We will be engaging them for over the next few weeks to work that out. And if you have health insurance um, already, once it meets the bare minimum that we outline, then you are encouraged to keep it. Or if you choose to buy the one another health insurance, then you are free to do so. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, yeah. Really, really, really and truly what we are attempting to do is to set a standardized floor for insurance coverage and insurance products in the, in the marketplace and to encourage persons to at least have that flow, as it were, or better. Okay, wonderful. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. jean Leons, uh, Chief Economist within the Department of Finance. And I need to re reference the paper because there's so many words for your, your department. Mm -hmm. um, Ms. James, Lauren James, a health planner in the Corporate Planning Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness. I'd like to thank you both for being here. Thank Just you. elucidating us, letting us know where things are at right now in terms of the journey toward NHI here in St. Lucia. Uh, we've come to the end of another installment of Issues and Answers. My name is Jesse Leon signing off for now. Goodbye.